The white housewife marked the toilet paper with a pencil just to keep the black maid from using the toilet. She thought that black people were full of germs and that sharing the toilet with them would make her sick. But the woman didn't know that many. The maid brought toilet paper to share the toilet with her every day. It was raining heavily one night. Minnie really wanted to pee, but the toilet for black people was far away. Finally, she had to risk going to the toilet in the house. Minnie carefully uncovered the toilet and sat her day down. Suddenly, there was a voice from her employer outside the door. Minnie, are you in there? Minnie realized that she had been caught and simply flushed to show that she was using the toilet. Get off my toilet! So Minnie was fired, but when she returned home, she was beaten by her husband. In addition, her former employer, Mrs. Haley, spread rumors among the whites that Minnie was fired for stealing. This led to the fact that no white family in the area would hire Minnie again. Minnie's oldest daughter had no choice but to drop out of school. She also followed her mother's example and worked as a maid in a white family. Minnie was very angry. That day she made a pie and sent it to Mrs. Haley's house. Mrs. Healy thought Minnie had come to apologize and was very pleased. She gobbled up the pie and said she could accept Minnie back to work, but she had to reduce Minnie's salary by $5. Then she asked Minnie what was in the pie to make it so delicious. That good vanilla from Mexico and something else real special. Mrs. Healy's mother also wanted to eat the pie, but Minnie wouldn't let her. Instead, she said it was a pie made especially for Mrs. Healy. Mrs. Healy is confused and asks Minnie to give her a piece of pie. Eat my shit. What'd you say? I said eat my shit. It turns out that the secret of the pie, which Mrs. Healy praised as delicious, is to add Minnie's poop. Mrs. Healy's mother fell down on a chair laughing and told Minnie to run. Because of this, she was soon thrown into a nursing home by Mrs. Healy, Mississippi in the 1940s. These white folks were outwardly moral but in fact had a disdainful attitude toward blacks. The most representative of these people was Mrs. Healy. She even put out a petition to require white families to build a black toilet. Healy says it's for fairness, but in reality it's because she's disgusted with them. Abilene is Minnie's best friend and a black maid. She has raised 17 children since she was 14 years old. Now Abilene's white family's employer only holds the children once a day. The rest of the time, Abilene is the one who takes care of the children. The little girl still sleeps in diapers at night, and no one cares. The diaper is not changed until Abilene goes to work in the morning. This meant that the little girl slept with her poop for 10 hours. So Abilene felt that these white people were very irresponsible. At this meeting, she was outraged but afraid to speak up when she heard Mrs. Healy's initiative to build a black toilet. Just then, a woman appeared and changed their lives. Skeeter had just graduated from college and was working at a newspaper. She was concerned about the state of black people's lives and wanted to do a story. The editor-in-chief asked her to try her hand at writing an article first. So Skeeter wanted to interview Abilene, but Abilene refused because it was a huge risk and she couldn't take it. Until the day she talked to Minnie and found out what happened to Minnie. Listening to Minnie's screams as she was beaten by her husband, Abilene's eyes went to the note with Skeeter's phone number on it. So the next day, Skeeter parked his car two blocks away and arrived at Abilene's house fully armed. The first time a white person was in the house made Abilene very nervous. Instead of letting Skeeter ask questions, she wrote down her story and read it to Skeeter. One time I told him this because I drank too much coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Only the laughter was brought to Abilene by the children. In the past, Abilene had experienced more pain, as most black maids do. She hastily wiped her hands and asked her employer to pay her back wages because her twin children had gone to college but were still $75 short of their tuition. The man walked away impatiently in the middle of the conversation. The maid plucked up her courage and said, Would you consider giving us a loan? I'd work every day for free, till it was paid off. The lady of the house snickered and said it wasn't free work, it was loan repayment work. She stopped the mortified maid and said God doesn't give handouts to the able-bodied. The maid's eyes filled with tears. A few days later, while cleaning, she found a gold ring. But instead of returning the gold ring to its owner, she hid it when she remembered the children at home who were waiting for money to go to school. However, Mrs. Healy would find out about it and it taught her a lifelong lesson. On the other hand, Mrs. Healy's previous maid, Minnie, is introduced by Abilene to Celia's family, who is isolated by Mrs. Healy's group. 
Celia is a simple and innocent person who treats many with courtesy. But she doesn't want her husband to know that she hired a maid. So many needs to avoid Celia's husband before coming to her house. Otherwise there will be serious consequences. Nevertheless, Minnie accepted the job. She excitedly goes to see Abilene. But when she opens the door, she sees a white woman in Abilene's house. Skeeter's interview with Abilene continues. Abilene told her many stories. When Minnie saw Skeeter, she immediately scowled. Skeeter didn't want to get Abilene in trouble. She just wanted people to understand how black women feel. Minnie snickered, reprimanded Skeeter, and walked out the door. But as soon as she did, she regretted it and turned around and went back inside. She was going to be part of the interview. But I need to make sure she understands this ain't no game we play. Slide your chap under the table. Face me. I need to see you square on at all times. I got to come up with your questions too? Oh. They talked in the house all night until dawn. The three of them had a great time telling stories about White Housewives, but the story of the two black maids wasn't enough. The editor-in-chief needed the stories of at least 12 people. Minnie asked Skeeter to put two of their stories into different people, but Skeeter refused and said it wouldn't be true. She even wanted to give up. Abilene suddenly told another story. Her son was hit by a car, and the truck ran over him and crushed his lungs. The white woman threw his body on the truck and drove to the black hospital and threw him in front of the door I left. But the doctors couldn't save him, so Abilene took her son home and watched him die on the couch. You stop this. Everything I wrote, he wrote. Everything he was gonna die with him. So Skeeter started contacting the other black maids. First was the current maid in Healy's house, but she refused because the kids needed money to go to college soon. Mrs. Healy saw Skeeter and asked her, when she could publish the initiative for a black-only bathroom. In fact, it had been given to Skeeter for a long time, but Skeeter didn't want to do it. Finally, when Mrs. Healy forced her to, she printed out the initiative, but she changed one of the words. That one small change was enough to break Mrs. Healy's heart. The woman's garden was now filled with toilets that caused her to collapse. I specifically said, drop old coats at my house, not commode! She wailed and removed the sign. There was a circle of people outside watching her laugh. Abilene turned her head and saw a little girl sitting on a toilet, laughing innocently. A white housewife rushed over and hugged her and hit her a few times because they believe that the toilet used by black people is not clean. For this reason, they build a toilet specifically for black people. This toilet was cramped and small. Black people will sweat every time they go to the toilet here. Over time, going to the toilet, also became a kind of torture for the black people. At that time, the affirmative action movement, led by Martin Luther King, was in full swing. On that night, a black man was shot and killed. In order to protect the white people, Abilene and other black people were thrown off the bus. Abilene was running with deep fear. When will this discrimination end? She ran all the way to Minnie's house. They were both worried that the story they wrote for Skeeter would send them to hell and even hurt their families and children. The two women hugged each other for warmth. A few days later, Abilene and the others left work as usual, but as soon as they got off the bus, some police officers rushed up and took the Healy maid away. It turns out that she found the gold ring and pawned it to pay for her children's schooling. The pawnbrokers found it strange and found out where the ring came from. The police held her roughly on the front hood of the car. <coughs> Abilene looked stunned from afar. Mrs. Healy watched all this with indifference. Skeeter went to Abilene's house as soon as he heard about this. This time she opened the door and was surprised by a room full of black maids. I'm on help with your stories. I'm on help too. We all are. Among them were old women and young girls. Skeeter heard many, many stories and saw the painful years of their lives and a life without even freedom. The last story is Skeeter's story. She was brought up by a black maid. The old maid had been in her home for 29 years. Skeeter's relationship with her was strong. But Skeeter came home from school and never saw the old maid. Mother said she quit and left. But Skeeter always thought it wasn't that simple. After compiling stories of other black people, she went back to her mother. It turned out that when her mother had become a state superintendent, the president had come from Washington to celebrate her. But the old maid was so clumsy that the chairman was bored. She couldn't even hear the knock on the door. Instead, it was Skeeter's mother who opened the door. Outside the door was the old maid's daughter who had come to celebrate her birthday. Skeeter's mother told her to go around to the back and wait in the kitchen. But as soon as she turned around, 
The girl walked in with a flourish. Skeeter's mother was annoyed at the many strange looks she received. She fired the old maid to assert her authority and let her go. Skeeter couldn't believe that her mother had fired the old maid, who had taken care of them for 29 years. For such a trivial matter, when she tried to find the old maid, she was told that she was dead. You broke her heart. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Skeeter wrote this last story. She hesitated before publishing the report. She was afraid that someone would recognize who the story was based on. When Minnie found out, she told them about the poop pie she made for Mrs. Hilly. Skeeter and Abilene were both stunned. Minnie told Skeeter to write about it. That way, Mrs. Hilly would never admit it was her or that it happened here. In the end, the book was published anonymously, and only a few thousand copies were printed, but they were sold out. Skeeter gave the money to each of the black maids in 13 parts. Minnie and Abilene jumped up and down with the money. <laughs> Countless white black people read the book. Even Mrs. Hilly bought a copy. She screamed when she read that she ate poop pie. <laughs> Mrs. Healy knew that Skeeter must have written the book and was furious and said she would sue Skeeter for libel. Skeeter didn't panic, after all. Mrs. Healy had no proof. Mrs. Healy went to Skeeter's mother again. She thought that Skeeter's mother would support her. However, she said no husband would want to come home to a wife like this. You know, Healy, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you've been eating too much pie. Mrs. Healy tried to get her support. But Skeeter made it clear that she knew everything and told Hilly to get out of her house. Mother took Skeeter back into the house. She was happy to see how courageous Skeeter was. When she found out that Skeeter had been offered a job in New York, she encouraged her to pursue her dream. That day Minnie went to work and there was a car behind her. It was Celia's husband who came back. Minnie looked back and started to call Celia while running frantically. Hey, Celia! Minnie! Stay back! Stay back! I'm not here to hurt you! It turned out that Celia had already told him everything, and he guessed the maid had been hired when he had a different meal. He was very grateful to Minnie, because Minnie's presence made Celia better and better. Then Johnny picked up his things and walked home with Minnie side by side. At this moment, Celia had prepared a big meal. They wanted to thank Minnie. Minnie was very flattered. I ain't losing my job. Uh, you've got a job here for the rest of your life. If you want it. Johnny gently asked Minnie to sit down. This was the moment Minnie gained courage. She later took the children and left her abusive husband. On the other hand, Abilene also left her employer's house, but she was forced to do so. In retaliation, Mrs. Healy ordered Abilene's employer to fire her. The little girl is very sad to leave Abilene, but there is a goodbye. Abilene later became a writer instead of a maid. A few days later, they went to church together. This time, when they entered the door, they heard thunderous applause. Abilene didn't know what to expect. What's happened for? Happy family for you! The people swarmed Abilene to the stage and gave her a book. A book with her name signed. They knew Abilene couldn't sign it. Then they signed it for Abilene. In the end, the book was given to Skeeter by Abilene. Today's racism has been abandoned by history through the sacrifice of countless wicked mortals. It wasn't just the efforts of Martin Luther King or Mandela, but millions more civilians. The price paid for any struggle for freedom is so great. Nirvana after sacrifice is the true meaning of life.